Is it right to send a WhatsApp video of a gross and uh, really disgusting event? I have been on WhatsApp for the last, you know, how many years, but in the last few weeks, I've seen people sending, especially in the area of disgust over homosexualism, people are sending videos of homosexuals sodomizing each other, doing bad things to each other. Is it right? Is it okay for us in our campaign to fight, to resist, to educate about homosexualism and the dark things they do? Is it right to send and forward these videos? I'm going to speak a series of five uh, messages on this issue. I'm going to talk about what people doing it. Is it right to do it? And what's the right thing to do? So, there was a WhatsApp of a Buddha. There was a WhatsApp video I saw of uh, a dormitory type setup of student, what looked like students in shorts, primary school students, sodomizing each other. And people are forwarding it to show that this is happening in school. I saw another video of, from Jinja uh, of a man again sodomizing another young man. And it just, I, I've had even difficulty thinking about it because it's, it's so disgusting. So uh, as we, we do this, I want to ask why? Why do people do this? Number one, people are doing this because they want to show others this is what homosexuality looks like and this is so bad. Because often people discuss about homosexuality without knowing what it is. So number one, this is it. Secondly, they want to, 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 they're like whistleblowers. They want to say, hey, uh, this is happening in schools. This is happening to our children. This is happening to our sons and daughters. Can somebody do something? So there is a, a, a whistleblower perspective to it. Uh, I think number three, they, they feel like they're educating the others. They're educating parents. They're educating um, the public about the dangers of these things. So I think in some way in a digital world, they're trying to send a WhatsApp message. But the question is, is it right? And I want to say yes and no. Um, I think we are, some videos are just disgusting and they should not be shared but they should only be shared to the appropriate person. Why? Uh, when, uh, when someone shares this message, it's like taking a sick person to the doctor. When, even when the, you take the sick person to the doctor, the doctor does not examine the person in public. He examines the person in private. That's why we have a private room. So that information, must be shared to the right concerned person. Who is the concerned person? We need the responsible person to be, in this case, when the doctor is the one, the doctor should be told, you know, uh, people take off their clothes, they show their private areas to the doctor, then the doctor can treat. We show the information to the person who can do something. Now, Uganda Communications Commission, are responsible for monitoring what's going on in cyberspace. Number two, the police is responsible for handling crime. We have Minister of Education, which handles the education area. We have the Minister of Ethics. We have a Minister of Gender. But there is actually no Ministry of Marriage and Family where people can actually direct all this emergent information. So one of the things that I want to point out is the lack of a cabinet minister of marriage and family as a, an appointed state government official who is responsible for receiving this information. The fact that that person does not exist, that's why people are sending all this information to each other in a sense of trying to kukuba anduru, in a sense of making alarm. That's what they're trying to do. So I actually think the right thing to do is that those videos should be shared to the right people who can be able to make the solution, to determine. There's people who are experts, like I'm an expert, I'm an expert on this subject. 
I know, I can tell, I looked at these videos, I analyzed them, I have skills. But even for me, when I look at it, it's disgusting. However, because it's part of my job as a pro-family leader, I look at these videos. So you can send them to me because I'm an expert. Should, uh, as a person, that's an, as an individual, not as a group. Because as a group, it's like you're trying to do surgery in public. Let me conclude with this issue. Where, even when a woman is giving birth, and let's say she's giving birth in a taxi, it's an inevitable thing. Uh, if, if, if labor pain comes on the taxi, there's a way in which we as a community, we decide that, okay, let's uh, create a private space. People get lessons. Even if a woman is giving birth on the side of the road, women come and men come and they cover her. They try to get a cloth so she can get some sense of privacy. It's inevitable that she's giving birth. It's bloody, but we seek to help uh, bring life without violating the privacy of that woman giving birth and all the women. So uh, I, I want to say that let us do all that we can in giving help to, to, to the people who need it while at the same time trying to cover so that we do not violate uh, 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 our children, violate our eyes, because some of these things are just frankly defiling. So we need uh, as a group, as a people, to identify who are the people we must share those very detailed private videos and information. And the absence of that creates people not knowing where to send these videos. So I think the leaders of it should be sent, messages like those should not be broadcast to everyone. They should be sent to those who are experts, who are appointed leaders, Police, uh, communications commission, pro-family leaders, those are the ones who can be able to take the information to the next level. That's what I think.